Okay, so I'd like to look at this problem. I'd like to look at a problem here with a 1.5 um, meter rod, okay? And it has an eight centimeter diameter, all right? Eight centimeters is about so large, right? Almost the um, size of my thumb from um, this joint here to the end of my thumb. So that's one, two, three um, joints up there. Uh, so it's a really, really thick rod and it holds a very, very heavy object at its, at its end. Uh, it's about 1,250 kilograms. And um, I want to know how much it bends, right? So let's draw that out, see what it looks like, right? Let's represent that as something. So I've got, um, say, a wall. And I'm going to uh, put a rod out like that, but he's actually going to come on down like this. He's going to he's going to shear like that, and then I'm going to have my um, object down here. It's 1,250 kilograms. All right. So I want to look at that, right? And I want to I want to look at this, and I want to figure out. Um, how far it's deflected down here. So this um, amount here, delta y. Now this is a very, very thick rod again, so it's probably pretty stiff. So it shouldn't be very much. Um, now here, also, also note it says ignoring the mass of the rod itself. You know, you could do something like this and you'll probably do it in your advanced uh, mechanics class where you figure out exactly how much something bends under its own weight, which is a really fun problem. Uh, it's just not for, for this class. It's not for you yet, but you'll get to do it later. I'm sure you'll love it. Um, okay, so let's look at the things we know about the problem, right? So like I said, we have an aluminum rod. And that rod has some diameter, has some mass, and I bet since we're going to have this sort of deflection here where we have a um, force in one direction, right, um, and, a, uh, and a length in the other direction, I bet this is going to be a shear problem, so we have to worry about the shear mod modulus. All right, uh, and we have the object at the end, and probably all we have to do is worry about the mass. Actually, we need the length here, I'm sorry. We need this length, which I just said is uh, 1.5 meters. We're ignoring the mass here, we need the mass there. Uh, diameter D is a good letter. We said it's eight centimeters. Uh, the length is L, another wonderful letter. Uh, that's 1.5 meters. The shear modulus, we'll call that G because it makes a lot of sense to. No, it, that's because it's sort of an engineering practice. Um, a lot of people call the shear modulus G. Usually you're allowed to use whatever, whatever you want, but on the other hand, um, should probably try to conform to symbols that other people are used to. And the mass of the object we'll call M. We'll call it little m because it's a different object. So I'll use capital letters for this guy, lowercase letters for that guy. Uh, don't really need it because it's such a small problem, but Still, it's probably a good uh, good idea to play with, to um, get used to um, using different symbols for different objects, um, or or just finding some way to differentiate between the objects with your um, notation. Notation's all up to you, right? And what do I want to find? I want to find the deflection in the rod. Call that delta y up here. I'll call it delta y down here. Um, let's see. And I just went through that spiel about keeping notation the same. This is the notation deflection in the rod, so we'll use a capital Y to make everybody happy. 
All right, so what do I need? I need a concept. I said we're probably going to use the shear modulus, so we're going to use shear stress. And that has an equation that looks something like this. The um, shear stress um, amount in, in the y direction from the x direction is equal to um, Fy over Ax is equal to G uh, delta Y over L. So we can live with that. So force in one direction, the Y area in the X direction, so this is the X direction uh, area, it does have a direction and it's perpendicular to um, the object. All right, so answer. How are we going to go about this? Well, I mean, we have to know the area. Do we know the area? No, but we know things about it. Um, then we want to know the stress. We need to know the stress so that we can find this thing, right? So, F, uh, Y, A, X, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, we can use A, X to find the stress and the stress to find delta Y. That seems like a reasonable way to go about it. Uh, you could also just um, solve for delta Y and throw in a bunch of numbers. But throwing in a bunch of numbers is not very clear for you, right? You, you know, if I just throw in a bunch of numbers, you say, oh, look, it's magic. Math is magic. And math is magic. It's the kind of magic you love. Um, okay, so I have pi d over 2 squared. That is, what is d? Okay, so pi um, 8 over 2 centimeters squared. That's 4 squared, which is 16 um, pi centimeters squared. And then I need to convert centimeters to meters. Um, so that's 16 pi over 10,000 square meters. And let's see, if you spend a little time with your calculator doing 16 pi over 10,000, uh, it's going to say that you get something like uh, 0 0.0052 square meters, which is probably what I'll use later, right? Um, but uh, just to make things easy for you, we can say it's 50.2 square centimeters. Uh, that has a little more meaning, as far as I'm concerned, um, than the number. Even getting that small, the numbers stop losing meaning. That's the whole reason why we have prefixes in the first place, is because, you know, you start getting lots of zeros on one side or the other. Uh, what, what does that mean anymore? It doesn't mean much. Um, okay... So I want to find my stress, like I said. And I said that I had an Fy over an Ax. Um, my Fy is Mg, and my Ax I already found, so I'll just leave it. Um, so that means Mg is 1,250 kilograms. G is usually 9.81 meters per second squared, um, as long as we're on Earth. And then I want to pop in this AX. I just spent all that time finding up there, 0 0.0052 square meters. Okay, and now, you know, you spend a little more time with your calculator, and that gives me 2.44 times 10 to the sixth um, newtons per square meter, uh, which is 2.44 megapascals, all right? So that's, so that's sort of the stress in the um, in the object. Now we have to figure out how much strain we get, right? Well, we don't need to figure out the strain because we're pulling the um, delta y out, right? Uh, we need to find the deflection. All right. Uh, so we're just going to solve for delta y here, right? Delta Y is equal to, well, it's proportional to sigma YX. We found that right here. 
and it's inversely proportional to G and is proportional to L. Okay, so we have L over G, that's L over G, times sigma YX. Um, L I claimed was 1.5 meters, or I assumed that, and I looked looked up the um, value for G is 3 times 10 to the 10th newtons per square meter. Um, then I need this sigma xy, which is uh, 2.44 uh, times 10 to the 6th uh, newtons per square meter. And that gives us a very, very tiny number, which is 0 0.000122 meters. Because um, these cancel, those cancel. And so we end up with 0 0.122 millimeters, which is imperceptible, right? Um, and I sort of, I sort of told you before um, that I didn't think this would be very a very big deflection. Uh, again, because we've got a metal rod about that thick, right? It's a, it might be aluminum, but it's still a metal rod about that thick, um, which is which is not easy to bend. All right. Um, so that's a good check. I said the you know the rod is thick. and hard to bend. So a um, 0 0.122 millimeter deflection is reasonable. That's awesome. And, you know, in the old day, we could just check the units and say, oh, look, I've got a length, I've got a length delta Y, it's in meters, and we're good. Um, so that is, uh, that is a pretty reasonable um, little problem for you. I hope it helps, and I will see you in class.